Hello everyone. I'd like to share some um, experiences and thoughts I've had recently about the tools and techniques that I have found to be the most effective and the most efficient ways to go about writing a novel. And that's become really important to me recently because um, the amount of work that my employer expects from us has uh, recently increased. It's maybe two or three times more um, than they were expecting last year. And uh, a consequence of that is that uh, often now during the working week, I'm just too tired to do much else uh, when, I, when I'm at home, uh, other than just relax and go to sleep. And so um, my creative writing is happening in short bursts. And uh, I need to be able, therefore, to maximise the amount of value I get out of those writing sessions. So the first choice I've made is... Um, and this is actually building on the experience I had writing the first book in my trilogy of Lissa Blackwood thrillers, is I, I am now most definitely a plotter. So there's a debate in the writing community about whether you're a plotter or a pantser. So pantser, writing by the seat of your pants, means you've got an idea more or, or less thought through and you load up your editor of choice or sit sit with your notepad and you start to write and it's a stream of consciousness and creative thinking and that's perfectly fine that's really valid and it works well if you've got loads of time to waste which i don't because my experience of pantsing has been that having written uh, you then spend a lot of time uh, editing your writing and shuffling your work around and reworking things and throwing stuff away. And I don't have time for that. So the beauty of plotting is that um, you really invest the time to think about the story that you want to tell. And you think about the sequence in which you're gonna tell it and how you're gonna structure that story so that it, it engages your reader. And it really helps to reduce the amount of rework that you have to do once you've created your first draft. So that's me, I'm a plotter. And the structure I'm actually following uh, nowadays is the seven point story structure, which you can find online at writerstoauthors.com. Um, so that's not me, but writerstoauthors.com is where you'll find it, seven point story structure layout. And it's a really engaging way actually of telling a story. And uh, I've been surprised uh, watching some films recently that actually you can spot um, these points happening in Hollywood movies when you look for them. So I'm not going to talk you through all of these things. If you're interested, just take a look at writerstoauthors.com and follow the hyperlinks here. But the hook is the obvious thing. It's the start of the story. What are you going to do that makes the author, the reader, uh, sorry, become so engaged with your work that they want to read on? The first plot point is what it says on the tin. It's the first point in your story where you're presenting one of those points that the whole thing is going to start to hinge on. Uh, pinch point one, something's starting, starting to go wrong <clears throat> and your uh, protagonist is going to be confronted with a problem, either external or internal to themselves, uh, something that's going to, going to need to be overcome and so on and so on. So the seven point story structure I use in parallel when I'm creating a story with mind mapping. And mind mapping is kind of like uh, electronic brainstorming. The tool I use for brainstorming, which is free, is something called FreeMind. And uh, here's the uh, mind map I have for the second book in my Lisa Blackwood series of thrillers. And on this mind map, of course, Lisa Blackwood is the heart of all things, which is where she should be. And in book two, I'm now thinking out loud to myself that she's become a much darker character. And her moral naivety in book one has been replaced by something much less compromising, something much harder. And I think that's important to think about. And if you're pantsing, you might not have, have those thoughts to front of mind. And what, what I'm pointing to is character arc. Um, because I can't just have Lisa Blackwood be some sort of mannequin who's strings I pull to have her do things but beyond that she doesn't change because that would be boring so actually across this trilogy uh, Lissa Blackwood's character has an arc and she's going to grow and develop 
and as a reader sometimes we might like what she's doing sometimes we might not like it but we might find it exciting which is what I'm hoping I'm going to get in book two and then uh, hanging off uh, Lisa Blackwood in in, in uh, these thrillers the intelligence services are important so I've got some thinking about them a uh, UK government politics extremely important and I've created a thing called the UK one party which is a far-right political party they've taken power and there's a whole stream of thinking about what far-right government means for this book also uh, in book one Lisa Blackwood's boss is a guy called Peter Carson but uh, I guess to abuse John le Carre in my Lisa Blackwood book two Peter Carson is out in the cold because the establishment has turned against him and that gives me opportunities because he's still um, working closely with Lass Lissa Blackwood and now I have the opportunity to use Peter Carson in a much more subversive way and that's fun for me to write and I think means that the Peter Carson character can have some fun as well. The beauty of Free Mind is that all of this text can then be exported into uh, a, a, a document, an editable document with a hierarchical structure and you can then start to collate your thoughts and start to work out the sequence of the story that you want to tell. So sequence of ideas, seven point story structure kind of naturally brings me into the next thing I want to show you which is this free tool called YWriter5. And it's basically book writing software. It's free. And uh, what we have, it's a, you can sort of view it as a content management system for writers. Um, we've got uh, a defined list of chapters. And in the Why Write a Five folder, each one of these chapters is an RTF, a rich text file document. And um, so for this is Lisa Blackwood book one and uh, each chapter of the book is present in here but you'll notice that some of the chapter names are highlighted in bold chapter four from the seven point structure has the inciting event it's 12 percent of the way through the text chapter 10 first plot point 25 percent of the way through chapter 15 first pinch 37 percent of the way through and when i write as long as i'm attentive to the word count then I can be quite deliberate now about making sure that those beats in the story occur at the moments when the reader gets the most value from them. And it's a very uh, effective way of writing, uh, I believe. The, the uh, YWriter 5 software itself comes with a built-in editor. Uh, I am now disregarding uh, the creator of the tool's advice and uh, I'm editing my chapters outside of YWriter 5 and then when I've finished my edits I'm bringing them back in. He's got sound reasons why he suggests that you don't do that. I've got a sound reason why I want to do it. So I'm going to show you how I'm editing in a second. But uh, having worked through all of this, when you've got your first drafts as good as they're going to be, Ultimately, you, you won't want to continue using this tool for, for your editing. You will want to probably collate them all down into a, a single document ready for um, you know, exporting as, a, as, a, as an e-book or for, for paperback or something. And uh, you can do that. And uh, there, there is a, there's an option here to export everything that you've created into a single document. Now, in terms of editing, um, I'll go back to my, my opening point that I need to be writing as efficiently and effectively as possible. And for first drafting now, the tool I'm using is Dictanote. And Dictanote is a free app um, that you can pick up. It works with Google Chrome. So you need Chrome installed and then you go to the Chrome store, you find Dictanote. Here's Dictanote. It does exactly what it says on the tin. You dictate to a note. So just now by starting to um, click here for the recording button, everything I say, you can start to see appearing at the top here in this edit box. And as soon as I stop speaking, uh, the text which I've just been dictating falls down uh, into the edit box there, new line. 
you've got some simple uh, controls, comma, over both punctuation and documentation style, new line. So I'm not going to do any more of that. You can see the efficiency of the tool. You've, you've got some basic layout uh, control. I have found that I can dictate into this tool with about a 97% accuracy of conversion of my speech to words. And I can do that maybe three or four times faster than I can type. So it's really maximizing my first draft efficiency. And when I finished um, getting that, those thoughts down here and to dictate, it's as simple to save them if you like as highlight, copy, paste them into whatever document I want. And that's it. So for me, this is just dictation, dictation software. You can save your notes as well. Um, I have done here um, for that one. So that's that's Dictanote. Ultimately, my Dictanotes are going to come into uh, Word because um, I discovered a short while ago this Word add-in called Smart Edit. Now there are lots of tools that people are selling uh, to uh, integrate uh, editor automated feedback on your writing. Um, I settled on Smart Edit, um, partly based on cost, partly because it gives you actually a, a lot of bang for the buck. And I think it was like a about an $80 license. Um, and I think it was worth every cent. Now this story here, the Hall of Souls is something else I've been working on for a, a competition. And um, I've run all of Smart Edit's checks on this document. I think it does like 25 checks or something. So I'm not going to go through all of them with you. Repeated words. In fact, for repeated words, the thing I'm looking for is, is there a sort of jazzy, buzzy word that I've used inappropriately often? Something that the reader might like the first time they see the word, but the second time they see it is going to be repetitive. And so repeated words are going from like 24 times down to five times. And uh, on a quick glance, I'm not seeing jazzy words. That's something I know I have a habit of doing. So I'm kind of pleased not to see, see many here. Repeated phrases, however, when I looked at this earlier, this one stood out for me. In her heart, she knew that. Because at the start of this short story, Part of her yearned for his company, but in her heart she knew that, dot, dot, dot. And at the end of the story, thinking about her mother, blah, 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 in her heart she knew that. Now I know if I was reading that, the first time I'd roll with it, the second time it would be repetitive. So when I come to edit this story this afternoon, that phrase, in her heart she knew that, the second time needs to be changed to something else. Adverbs. Um, I'm pleased to see that most adverbs are only used once. A few are being used twice. I've got only is being used six times. That's not so good. You're only jealous. The only place. There was only. It was only. I only have. Blah, blah, blah. It's a bit repetitive. And when I edit this afternoon, I, I will be looking to actively reduce the, the numbers of only's. Probably trying to dump a couple of suddenlies and just reduce my adverb list. I'm going to move on to, uh, to some other things. Punctuation. Uh, the thing which caught my eye here for this story is the six colons, uh, because colons are probably, in my opinion, about the most intrusive bit of punctuation you can use. The reader's reading one thing, and then you make them stop, and you make them then read something else, and then you probably full stop and then you carry on. And it's really, it slows the reading down with quite an abrupt pause. Um, I know as well that I have a bit of a habit of using colons, so I'll be looking at those later as well. I don't myself tend to be so bad with um, misusing homonyms, so I won't dwell there. It'll give you feedback on cliches and the start of words and sentence lengths and blah blah blah. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's a I'm finding it to be a really helpful tool. Because I think there is a there's a place between 
um, when you're writing and you're editing yourself on the page compared to um, the feedback you might want from paid um, paid editors work that sort of self editing in between with electronic tools um, smart edit is one of the tools you can use there's plenty of others on the internet I wanted to show two others today so the first one if you go to hemingwayapp.com um, you can use this tool very simply click on the right button paste your text into Hemingway click edit uh, it's a kind of a U US oriented thing so US grade 5 and uh, Hemingway is saying that the writing is good but it's saying I've got 51 adverbs and out of four and a half thousand words should have 40 or less for Hemingway style writing so I've got some work to do later on to prune out some adverbs I've got some passive voice um, actually it's meeting the Hemingway goal but 26 times I'd probably still be looking to reduce my passive voice a bit so that the writing itself is more impactful uh, 14 phrases of simpler alternatives 12 sentences are very hard to read so I might want to look at that the beauty in um, Hemingway is you can just highlight over the, um, the the colored text and it will tell you what it doesn't like so be bold don't hedge I might marry Paul Seafall Archer I thought uh, actually for this sentence I don't agree that uh, that that needs to be changed whereas here uh, in this sentence we're now seeing um, it's a, a salmon colored thing Hemingway saying it's very hard to read it is actually uh, a little bit of a, of a long thing so I might want to do something there use active voice there is work to be done is there a more in fact impactful way of saying that so that's Hemingway uh, you get good feedback from this another one which I've just found which I think is kind of new or in beta at the moment is something called edit minion at editminion.com so it's the same sort of thing you paste your work into the panel you can see the sorts of checks that have been selected and then you run edit and edit minion gives you some feedback same kind of idea you can then highlight over anything that edit minion suggests might have a problem you might want to look at and it will then give you things to think about so the word son could be a homonym just make sure you've done the right thing he is exciting passive might not be bad you might want to think about it a weak word could be stronger um, edit minion is suggesting saying said instead of replied I'm not going to take that choice here highlights the adverb so you're getting the idea down the bottom it's telling me there are 25 adverbs from a smart edit we know therefore they're being used 51 times we saw that in the other the other bit of feedback 190 possible homonyms it's just things that you can check for when you've created your draft that are going to tighten up your writing um, and perhaps help you to get more value out of a paid for edit later on so I hope you found that useful uh, either if just one of the tools I'm using you you kind of think yeah that's you know that's going to add some value to me I'm gladly shown that to me today I'm going to give that a try or if it's something about plotting beforehand for efficiency or dick to note or anything like that I hope you found it helpful and uh, I've enjoyed talking it's a sunny day outside so I'm now going to get outside and uh, get some sun and fresh air thanks a lot see you all soon bye bye